This video is going to cover the Creo parametric command called blend. Sometimes this is also referred to as a loft or a multi-section solid in other CAD software packages. The concept behind a blend is fairly straightforward. You are creating an end result that is blending between different cross sections. Here on the screen we have a very easy example. This vase, so something that you would put maybe a couple of flowers in, is essentially just a couple of circular cross sections that are varying in diameter sizes. Another more complicated scenario would be for this screwdriver. Now this screwdriver, the end of the screwdriver is going to transition between a circular cross section shape eventually ending in a rectangular cross-section shape. And so for this example, I want to guide you through two different scenarios, a very easy scenario to begin where we transition between two different rectangles and a more complicated scenario where we transition between a bunch of different shapes. So in a Creo parametric blend, you can either have the sketches pre-created or you can create them on the fly. For our smaller rectangle example, I'm going to already have them pre-created. So I am first going to sketch on my front datum plane, and quite simply, it's just going to be a centered rectangle, and I'm not really concerned here with the size, so I'm just eyeballing a smaller rectangle. I will then create an offset plane, and I'm going to create that towards the back, and again, just eyeballing that offset distance of about 300. On that back datum plane, I will also create a centered rectangle. This time, I'm going to make sure to make this quite a bit larger. And then finally, turning off the display of my datums, I eventually want to transition this smaller rectangular cross section into a larger rectangular cross section. To begin, I'm going to find my button, which is in the Shapes Overflow group. Click on Blend. In your dashboard, you have two choices. You can either have Creo to create those cross sections on the fly, or if you already have them pre-created, that's what the little uh, squiggle here is for. So obviously, I want to click on them since they're already created. As with most things in Creo, there's lots of ways to do it. So you can either change the button up to the top. You can also come here to your sections tab and you can switch back and forth here. And then finally you can right click and make your change here. So what I'm gonna do is choose the selected sections. And then I'll choose my front profile. Now you'll notice there's a little dot in the corner. That's what we call our start point. That's gonna be very important for us to keep track of later on. I will then insert to tell Creo that I'm adding a new cross section to blend to and then choose the back item and you can see immediately how it does create that it almost looks like a little pyramid with the top chopped off. Now as long as the shapes are very similar to each other then Creo does a good job of making sure that the start points match up with one another. The start points in a pre-created sketch will show up as a white dot somewhere on that actual shape. Now here's the thing, if the dots do not line up, then you can get a twist to occur. So I can actually slide this dot from my back profile over. And if I change my rendering style to give you guys a better clue of what's happening, we can see that there is a twist that is occurring. So clearly it's very important for your start points to line up to make sure that a twist is avoided. Now let's work on a much more complicated scenario. The first thing that I'm going to do is turn on the display of my datum planes and I'm just going to hide these two datum planes. I'm initially going to sketch my triangle, that's the shape I'm going to start with, uh, on the front datum plane. Um, and I am going to create these sketches internal to the blend command and not already have them pre-created. So actually my first step is to just click on the command. Inside of the blend dashboard, I do want to make sure that the sketch sections is selected. In the sections tab, I will then tell it to define my initial sketch on my front datum plane. This is simply just going to be a triangle, and I'm going to make that triangle using the line command. 
Once you have completed the triangle, you can complete your sketch. And then here's where it kind of gets a little goofy. Uh, it doesn't show that triangle on the screen. It's one of the things that Creo does. And the next thing it's asking you for is a distance. Now this is the distance that is defining that parallel section surface. So I want to go towards the back of my triangle and I want to go back about 250 millimeters. So I am going to make that a negative 250 offset. And then in the sections tab, you can see that it's, you know, concerning section two. Again, it's saying that distance is 250 and then I would hit sketch. Now this is where you will start to lose your eyesight a little bit, or at least if you're like me. Uh, what Creo now does show you, of course, is the triangle that you had originally created. I'm going to turn off the display of my datums. Um, and then it's also showing you on that same screen, it's showing you the triangle projected back onto your new sketch surface, and it shows up as a construction line. So it's a very thin dashed entity. I want to make this a rectangular cross section. So using a corner rectangle, I am going to create the rectangle shape towards the rear. And then I want to make the rectangle basically just as wide and tall as the triangle, which is nice because again, I still have that uh, little tiny construction triangle. So using a couple of coincident constraints, I'm just going to make sure that my rectangle is the same size and then it's another coincident constraint to the height up here. All right, now what problem do we have to deal with next? Well, the problem between a triangle and a rectangle is that these two items do not have the same number of vertex points. And in the Creo software, all shapes must have the same number of vertices. And if for whatever reason they don't, there are some tricks that we have up our sleeve. And the first trick that we have up our sleeve is uh, when a case like this, where we have like three vertices trying to blend into four, we can actually create what's called a blend vertex, where we would have one vertex of the triangle to actually split into two different directions. And in particular, I want the top point of my triangle to split into two directions. So what I'm going to do is go back into the first shape and make that so. So I have to click back into section one and I have to hit edit. And then I, I'm going to left click on the top point of the triangle, right click and hold, and you can see that it does say make that the blend vertex. And it's a little hard to see, but there's a little circle that gets created around that. So now when I click OK, I just want to show you the second thing now that we have to watch out for, and that is the start point. So the start point in our triangle is identified by this um, little vertex spot with an arrow kind of emanating out of it. So for the triangle, it was in the bottom left hand point. And if I come over here to section two and edit that sketch, if we take a look at that, it actually ends up in the top left. So to switch this from the top left to the bottom left, you left click to select, right click and hold and choose start point. Now, once I click complete, you can see that it creates my shape between them. Moving on, I then want it to blend into a circle. So I'm gonna come back to my sections tab. I will hit insert. Once again, this is asking for an offset distance. I want it to go behind the rectangle by about 250. So I'm once again going to make that distance 250. And then I would sketch on that surface. And from here, you can see that we have not only a projected triangle, but also a projected rectangle sketch. It is really hard to see that because it does show up as a very thin dashed line, but they are there. Now, the problem with the circle is that a circle has no discernible vertex points. So what we're going to end up doing is 
turning a circle into actually four separate arcs that will then in turn have four vertices to match up with the four vertices of our rectangle. Now to do that, I am going to first employ the use of a couple of center lines. Um, so I'm gonna create a center line here and a center line here. And then I'm gonna use the coincident constraint to make sure that the center line that I'm using is always going to be on that vertex point that basically that projected vertex point back onto my surface and it would connect the top right and the bottom left and then you know the other ends would be the top left and the bottom right so hitting the coincident constraint I would say this center line to this point and that same center line to the opposite corner and then two more coincident constraints for the top left and bottom right. This will give me a nice little intersection point where I can draw my circle. And I'm gonna make it about this big. And then again, a circle has no discernible vertex points, but we need to have four because that's how much our shape has here in the previous shape. So to do this, you're gonna hit the divide command. And the divide command I would click on it at the intersection points with the center lines. But the problem is, is that you wanna make sure that the first location that you click the divide command on also lines up with the location of your start point. So when I click on the divide, notice that my previous start points were in the bottom left. So I would start at the bottom left and then I would just click around at those intersecting locations. So really what I've done is I've split that circle into four arcs meaning that it has four vertex locations, and now you can see how it is nicely blending, right? The triangle into the rectangle, making sure that the top point of the triangle is splitting. And then each one of my vertex points of my rectangle is blending into that equivalent location where it intersects those center lines of the circle. Finally, we're gonna have this to end with a singular point. So back into the sections I go, I'm going to insert one more sketch. And this time I'm only going to have it to go back about 100 millimeters. And then when I hit sketch, the only thing that I'm going to put here is a singular point. And the point that you're going to use is the point that's underneath of the sketching category, not the point that's underneath of the datum. In fact, you can see it's not allowing you to click on it. So make sure it's this point. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna click and I'm just gonna place this point over here to start, but then I'm gonna define a coincident constraint from that point to that projected center point of my circle. And then finally, if I rotate this shape around so you can see it, it does in fact, right lead to a singular point on that end so you can have it to end at an endpoint as long as it's either the first section in your blend or the last section so sometimes blends can be very straightforward if you're just moving between a rectangle and a rectangle or a circle and a circle but sometimes blends can need a lot of legwork in order to ensure that you have either the proper number of blend vertex or vertices between each shape. We cover Creo parametric blends in our Creo Introduction to Modeling class. If you have any other questions or would like to see course descriptions or our training schedule, you can find that on our website at ran3d.com underneath of our training tab.